welcome to news click since august jammu and kashmir and particularly kashmir valley has been living through and going through turbulent times we have with us parvez imroz who's a patron of jammu and kashmir coalition of civil society has been working as a civil liberties activist for the last 40 years uh, to share with with us what his experience uh, has been in Kashmir and his understanding of the developments uh, in Kashmir. Welcome to News Click, Parvez. Thanks. Parvez, let me start by asking you the first question that comes to my mind, um, because you've been documenting these issues for, for decades now. Uh, how do you see the development today in 2019 in comparison to 2008? 2010 and 2016 and in which way is this uh, what does it show about the situation in Kashmir? You see previous uh, instance very very spontaneous you know 8, 10 and 16 and uh, <clears throat> uh, number one the government was not prepared also for that you know uh, but this year, 2019, you know, they had made a lot of preparations, you know, maybe going on from months or years for uh, uh, doing what they did, you know, uh, abolishing the special status, then bifurcating the state, and then also, you know, reducing their status from the union territory, which was really devastating for Kashmiris, you know, they had never imagined in their wildest dreams that the government of India could go up to this extent, you know. Even in Dogras and Jammu? Yeah, they were, everybody was held shocked, you know, as if it was a huge, um, uh, you know, and people were frustrated and then don't know. Though there were rumors earlier, you know, they are up to going to do this thing, but nobody can believe that, yeah. So this time, since the government had already made uh, huge preparations and uh, deployment of the further troops there, CRPF, and we have the militarization there, but this is not the unprecedented, you know, uh, the way you have the um, army personnel, boots present everywhere on streets, highways, you know, villages, and um, everywhere, you know. Even in residential colonies. Yeah, they everywhere, I'm telling you that. So with the result that uh, the, the fear psychosis, you know, the element of fear, which was probably they had used very successfully this time, you know, how to prevent uh, the protest and how to prevent the recursion uh, of the 2010 or 16 there, in which they were able to contain it here. But this thing, the uh, uh, situation, and the level of fear and level of control by the army was unprecedented. Yeah. Tell me how in this situation where everything is at a standstill, there is no public transport, there are no internet, so communication, uh, despite 23 landlines, communication is still a huge problem. Now mobile phones have been restarted without SMS and all. In this situation, how did the judiciary function and what are the problems that uh, litigants had to face or those who were seeking in news and uh, release of people, their uh, kith and kin, how did they cope with the situation? You see, if we see all the government institutions, the, the government offices, there, I mean, they have got paralyzed, you know. The government employees are visit, are going to offices, but schools, for example, you take schools or teachers are going, school children are not going there, right? Judiciary was the institution, and it is still an institution where people still have the hope that because people whose relatives have been booked under the Public Safety Act, you know, <coughs> in which one a person can be detained without charge sheet and trial for year, months and months. And uh, they have been going to judiciary, but the unfortunate uh, response from the judiciary, which should have been very sensitive towards the 
civil liberties issue and they're not following their own laws. For example, the flow of management rules are there where they... What does uh, that mean? That means that the habeas corpus petition has to be decided within uh, four weeks' time and notice has to be given to the other side within uh, 24 hours. That has not been followed. I mean, on the contrary, the notice have been, are being issued for four uh, uh, weeks and then again it is listed and again four weeks. I mean, it is really the... This is unprecedented. This is the... I mean, it makes the judicial institutions completely irrelevant because if the judiciary is not following their own laws and also... Uh, but people have no option, you know. And they are going there. As for the other matters that are concerned, for example, the 107, you know, they have been arresting people under uh, CRP. There's a provision where they, for breach of breach peace. Of peace. Yeah, you can detain anybody, even you can detain For any issues. length of time? Unless he's not going to give the bond, yeah. And uh, they have to give the bond and then. Even for the bonds, you know, there is another. They have, they have become. They have made some other laws there. They have to give. They are calling the youth whom they are arresting, because they have been arresting uh, youth indiscriminately, even the juveniles in villages, and uh, which are informal arrest here. Yeah, so are these not, are not recorded. They are not recorded. There is no FR that only formal arrest is very limited. You know, I told you 350 maybe in PSA and then 107. But the indiscriminate detention in villages, in tassils of the young people there, anybody who suspect, that's why the young people are not living in their homes. They go and stay at nights to other, uh, other places there. So in that case, they, uh, they, uh, that, uh, you know, they, they, they have been, you know, asking the, uh, detention, uh, asking the detainees to pay the money, extortion and other things are uh, being uh, done there, yeah. So in that case, what I'm telling you that the role of judiciary is completely become not uh, useful for the uh, people there, but they have no option but to go to judiciary. Yeah. What is the number of arrests according to you? I know that you're uh, right now in the middle of preparing your report, but the government side says that they arrested, the, the Indian Home Minister has said that they picked up about 4,000 people and now only 1,000 people are left. What is your assessment? Was it 4,000 or more? No, I think I'm telling you, as I told you earlier, informal arrest means which they are not showing in the FIR anywhere on the record. That it would be more than 20,000, 30,000. And there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. And these have been who have been picked up informally and kept for. They have been picked up informally. They release them after, weeks. and then they call their uh, parents, which I told you that there's no provision to give the uh, uh, what do you call that uh, community bonds. They are calling the detainees, uh, relatives. They are calling to them the police station and give the community uh, bond there that they are not going to, which is which is nowhere in the law. You are taking the bonds from their parents. So this is like a collective punishment. It is. It it's is. A and it is something punishment. it is something you know in Kashmir there are two one is the formal way, second is the informal way. The formal way is you no know, which is the legal like PSA, it is a formal way, right or wrong. You take a guy to different states, you book him. But the other formal informal ways, like for example a clamping of one forty four, preventing this are detaining the people, you know, without uh, any formal order. So informal ways are more than the Dangerous, formal ways. Yeah. Yeah. And these have been used to control the people, to control them because the government uh, is uh, paranoia that there should not be any mass uprising in Kashmir, yeah, which is a big question, you know. Mm. But after uh, 2019, um, as some political analysts say that why there's a calm, you know, very deafening calm in Kashmir, what it will yeah. move towards, yeah, nobody knows. Nobody <laughs> knows, yeah. At the same time, the government seems to be preparing for uh, a spate of protests because CR 
the Central uh, Reserve Police Force has been asked to collect non-lethal munitions, pellet guns, uh, tear gas, etc., etc., uh, to in order to meet the challenges that they expect uh, to face very soon. But meaning that they have to stay in the army for a longer period. I mean. I mean, they, they, they have to then further, uh, I mean, it would be very, I mean, huge expenses. I mean, yeah. you have that, the Indian taxpayers have to pay there. Mm -hmm. And then nobody knows because as far I am concerned, you know, I have as a Kashmiri also working on the ground there, the anger, the, you know, which I have seen there this time not from the uh, political parties who are, you know, I'm talking the Hurriyat, but even from the mainstream who were like NC, like PDP, who were, and that constituency, they have become more because the way they have been treated, their leaders have been detained. and More the way, angered than... More anger that here. Yeah. So there is a... I mean, Nobody knows really, I mean, whether, uh, what future holds, yeah. Now in a situation where there is no news available for Kashmiris, they can't talk to anybody, their newspapers don't report their views or their conditions and their concerns because there is complete control on the local media. And their Indian media has a mixed uh, role with electronic channels and a large section of the print media on one side and uh, social media and some section of the print media which is reporting still from the ground. In this situation, how important is the international and Indian public opinion? Because Kashmiris don't know anything what is happening on the ground. I mean, what kind of news is being fed to people in India or abroad? Yeah, we don't know anything about because we don't are getting the Indian newspapers there since 5th of August. Even still, we are not getting the papers there. Even the, uh, the so-called national dailies? Yeah, yeah, we're not getting it. I'm so not, Kashmiris I'm not, are I, 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 not I, just local newspapers, but even access to national dailies? No, no, local papers are being printed there. No, I'm telling yeah. you, the national, they, I used to get five, six papers daily, but I'm not getting I read the, I came here yesterday and saw first time the, you know, this uh, Delhi, Delhi here, papers. Delhi papers here. But then they, uh, you don't have internet, you don't know what's happening outside there. And uh, uh, then uh, uh, all you heard by the, uh, even by the Indian uh, electronic media, the way India reacted to the international media coverage, which was, which was very embarrassing for the Indian government. And so that gave the idea that the whole international media has been very active in, I mean, there was a focus on the, Kashmir, yeah, that was the thing. But as far as the Indian uh, print media is concerned, and then um, as we know that it was really very disappointing, yeah. Mm. Now, in such a situation, what role do you think? I mean, there were two reports that the UN uh, uh, Committee on Human Rights had brought out on Kashmir in the last two years. Uh, did it play any role, leave any impact or do you think international opinion and Indian people's opinion is something which is vital for uh, for this for the Kashmiri people now in this phase of their struggle? Yeah, of course. You know, you can't go. United Nations is not an NGO. You know, a report from the UN OHCHR report in 2018 and 2019, in which they have asked for uh, the government of India to hold a comprehensive independent investigation into the uh, human rights situation in Kashmir and... Uh, Which existed prior to prior August to 5th. August 5th because uh, then uh, we have also documented uh, like torture reports. But government of India cannot deny, you know, all the... And that too when there's a huge international uh, intervention, yeah, which has 
uh, at the cost of the Indian government's image outside. Government of India cannot deny it when, uh, and that too, when all the ground reality is very You mean against. they ought not to deny, because they are denying. No, no, they have been denying it. They have been always denying it. You know, in 2008, there was a report, European Parliament passed a resolution urging the government of India to hold investigation into the mass graves. You know, and even, uh, but Gumta of India refused it. Gumta of India has been refusing everything. Gumta of India refused UN military observer groups of India and Pakistan to monitor the OIC. Gumta of India refuses OIC's, you know, fact-finding uh, visit to come to Kashmir. Gumta of India denies the foreign media to come to Kashmir, right? Government of India has been denying even, for example, if the International Monitoring Group on Elections, they want to monitor the election in Kashmir. Government of India has been denied. Government of India has denied even they suppose there are seven special repeaters of United Nations, particularly the torture, they want to come to visit to Kashmir. So, I mean, denial is not. You go and keep denying the outside. When that too, when you are a very ambitious country, become trying to become the uh, uh, member of the permanent member of the UN Security Council. I mean, what it will be definitely at the cost of the image, India. I mean, India has a good image worldwide, it had at least. But now the way they are behaving, I mean, you, you have to be responsible to the international humanitarian law. You cannot keep denying it, you know and brutalizing the Kashmiri people there on the name of security, on the name of terrorism and peace. Basically, the ground reality is against India there. And whatever they have been, the government of India have been doing there from last 30 years, situation is getting downhill. It's getting worse. It is getting worse. It is d getting downhill and no, no, I, I don't think it is working for the income revenue. Well, that's all it for uh, today, Parvez. Thank you for uh, talking to us in News Click. We hope to have you again with us uh, to take us through the minefield that Kashmir has turned into. Uh, that's all for today. If you have any feedback, any comment, do write to us. Thank <laughs> you.